Thank you so much for watching this. I'm just going to share with you what I've um, come to find and read in the last 24 hours. So I'm sure you've heard of Matt Hancock. Uh, one of the latest news stories is Matt blaming the British public for getting too many coronavirus tests. Um, it's... I'm kind of speechless. Uh, then um, Matt Hancock is uh, telling us, don't kill your gran, um, urging young people to stop floating the rules. Um, interesting that um, young people are kind of pushing back, saying don't blame us for the coronavirus spike and stop, stop giving us mixed messages, stop getting us to go out, eat out and 50% off meals and get back doing things and then and then you're blaming us. So this is obviously just the, the things that are going on. You, you might be watching them. You, I'm sure you might have seen some of these stories yourself. Um, and then uh, my hometown, um, who's uh, recently announced the new Bolton restrictions, lockdowns, curfews. Um, so just in the last 24 hours, I went on to uh, Matt Hancock's Twitter and I saw this tweet from uh, from a few days ago and I, I I just started to look at the the comments I noticed there was a lot of comments retweets and the and the first one I saw was this one um, what's your take on Matt Pride And um, uh, two two things at this point. Um, before before I saw this tweet, I'd not heard of Matt Pride before, and I didn't know that the World Health Organization were recommending these things for um, children as young as four. So I wanted to wonder what Matt Pride was about. And I found this I found this post on the Mail Online. So it's MAP stands for Minor Attracted Persons. This is going back to June. And um, so I've been reading about Map Pride. And um, and then so I've been on to Twitter to look at the hashtag Map Pride. And uh, these are the things. These are the kind of things these are the things that are um when it's not an advert these are the kind of things that are on here So this is this is Matt Pride. But then the, the bigger thing for me was this um about what the World Health Organization uh 
recommending or putting out there for young children. Knowing that it's the, the World Health Organization that has been the primary driving force to the coronavirus, lockdowns, mandates, face mask wearing, social distancing. It's the World Health Organization, the WHO, that are the, for governments, the go-to authority. Slightly different in America when uh, Donald Trump, I think start a few months ago or recently defunded or stopped, stopped funding the World Health Organization. But I'm sure you're watching this and you've heard of the World Health Organization. I don't know if you've heard of um, Agenda 30. This is all this is all to do with United Nations and World Health Organization. What's going on in our world in 2020? Is, um, is all related to the 2030 Agenda for the Sustainable Development. Also, it's the same World Health Organization. that in 2019 published its annual report for global preparedness for health emergencies, publicly available. This is the, this is the report, a world at risk. This is 12 months ago, three months before the Wuhan coronavirus um, made news. And in this big report, on page 10. To, to, come, to confirm and clarify at this point that system wide means across the world, because the system is like, like the World Health Organization, it's the world, it, it means the world. Um, so this is all this is all just taken from this this report this freely available report there's also this on page 28 and then if you're watching this uh, you've maybe watched some of my other videos you you'll probably know about my personal views and beliefs about what's going on in the world with this virus. So my, my personal thoughts and levels of trust and respect towards the World Health Organization is, um, is very low, if I've got any trust whatsoever. So to read that the World Health Organization uh, recommending or advocating about young children that this that this should be going on it um it's one of those where when you see something or you hear something in a conversation that you can't unhear or you can't unsee and it just absolutely stops you in your tracks and reading this tweet stopped me in my tracks so i found online, publicly available, this PDF, this 68-page 68, 68 PDF, the World Health Organization, Regional Office for Europe, and I'm not actually sure what that, that stands for, Standards for Sexual Education in Europe, a framework for policymakers, educational and health authorities and speci specialists, the World Health Organization Europe, so it's a big report, and I was wondering where, it, in this report, does it talk about what should be taught to young children? 
between the ages of naught to four. So it took a little while going through. It's a very, it's a very detailed report. It's um, lots of text. I've not read. I've not read all this text. I was skimming. All, I was skimming through it to get to the point that was relating to that tweet. And um, so it's actually page, I think it's page 39. It's the matrix. So I saw this, so it's, um, it's going to give us some information um, for, for different age groups of, uh, of children from from newborn through to um, late teenage years. And I started to read this. The, the, if it's got the orange background compared to when it's not, that means that it's a new, a new main topic. Obviously this is a new, these are new recommendations from the World Health Organization. So, young little toddlers, giving information about um, these things. Talking to young children, young. And then sexuality. Just to recap, this is for age naught to four. I don't know what you think if you're watching this and you've got young children or you're planning to have young children. But for me personally, I wouldn't want my young daughter been taught or introduced or taking part in anything to do with these kind of topics. It goes on, there's more things. And then, obviously, if you go to the next age bracket, four to six, um, I've personally not got children in, in this age bracket. It's starting to bring in about gender identity. At four to six, Consolidating their gender identity. Talking about friendship and love towards people of the same sex. And then the six to nine age category of which two of my daughters are in that category. I give information about, uh, wow, wow, wow.
for me personally, uh, what I would deem as the appropriate time, I would like to take the responsibility and be responsible <clears throat> for sharing with my children these, these types of things. I've not looked at what comes after this, nine to 12. I can only imagine it's, um, it's obviously going to go more, more deeper, more, more in depth, more graphic. And then you have the sexuality agenda, V2. Thank you for watching this video. I, all I can say is I recommend, I recommend you do your own research. It's what I've been doing for um, all this last four months in particular, since becoming completely skeptical about what's going on with the virus. Search for Agenda 2030. I'm going to share a link to this report in the comments of this video. You might want to look at Matt Pride. Lots, lots, lots happening, lots changing. <clears throat> the more I see, the more, the more I can see how it's our young children that are, um, whose lives are being exposed to things that I don't believe they should be exposed to at these kind of ages. And that um, they've been presented with options and with paths which go against creation, go against, go against how life should be. Thank you for watching this video. God bless you and protect you and your entire family and your extended family and any children that are in your family. Agape Paul.